Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. If you were with me on the live stream a few nights ago, then you were there when I promised a video on this, so here it is. And this video is, yes, yes, I was right about the Joker movie. I was absolutely right about the Joker movie. So, uh, two things, obviously, that question will, uh, will, will lead to are, how do I know that? You know, did I go see it or something after saying I wasn't going to see it? Secondly, what exactly was I right about? What did I say about it? So, I did not go see it. I said I wasn't going to, and I did not go see that. I'm not interested in giving my money to that. Not because of the stupid political reasons, uh, if anybody's new to the channel. Um, I think that's ridiculous, uh, and, and I think it's really... really it, I, it's probably a marketing ploy, honestly, trying to pit this movie against the Birds of Prey film somehow. And you've got, you know, a lot of the... Uh, the usual suspects, you know, touting, oh, Harley Quinn, it's going to be so wonderful, and what a great example of diversity and such and such or whatever. Um, and then you've got, you know, the Joker, you know, usual, oh, evil, violence, white male, blah, 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 you know. Uh, I think that's probably some, some marketing, but, you know, that's playing out. And and I think there are some people, you know, genuinely upset about it, which is ridiculous. So that's not why I didn't go see it. Uh, as I've said in previous videos, this is not the proper treatment of the character of the Joker. This is going to be detrimental to him and the the roles that he plays in our society and in the Batman mythos in particular. And uh, just briefly, uh, you know, just to recap that, the Joker is an elemental evil. He's an elemental force. He's always been that. Yes, they've tried to give him origins here and there. Nothing really stuck, though, because the, the, the character that people wanted him to be, that readers wanted him to be, you know, he's not, he's not some spirit or anything. He's immortal, but... Uh, a, he's a mortal, I'm saying, you know, but he's just, he, he, he fills this role of this sort of elemental um, uh, challenger of meaning, challenger of the Batman's justice, challenger of the Batman's, um, you know, uh, black and white, and there are lines that one doesn't cross, such as killing and stuff like that. And I said the best, best example, I mean, not the best, but one of the best examples I've seen of this is in the Batman Arkham Origins game. Which is surprising, because that's the first one that Paul Dini didn't write, and Paul Dini just writes amazingly well. But uh, but Jeff Johns helped out a lot with the with the development of that, and it drew a lot from the comics. It drew a lot from some from Killing Joke, certainly from some from some other comics as well. So uh, the Joker is an elemental force, and I'll place links to these videos where I did a, the difference between elemental villains and the um, you know the, the the fallen villain, so to speak, and. People are trying to make the Joker a fallen villain in this video, in this movie. Now they're trying to make him a sympathetic um, anti-hero, a sympathetic anti-hero. That's not who that character's supposed to be. Uh, you should be able to go see him do all of these things. You shouldn't care about what caused him to fall into that. You should look at the, you should look at Joker, and see the absolute horror that he's given himself over to. And that's what takes center stage, and that's what's the lesson saying, wow, so no matter what I face in life, I can't go there. I need to make sure I never go there, you know, in any whatever lesser degree that you might, you know, because a few of us are going to end up, you know, flat out jokers. But um, th these kinds of tellings about, well, let's just examine his descent into madness. Let's examine that. Well, this this just makes us look at him and go, oh, poor guy. Yeah, oh, but for the grace of God, there go I. No, no, that's not what that character is supposed to do. He's not a fallen villain. He's not there to tell you, um, you know, it could have happened to any one of us. I mean, that's what he wants you to believe, right? I mean, look at Killing Joke. All it takes is one bad day, Batman, and, and you could be just like me. And Batman's saying, no, absolutely not. There, There is right and wrong, and, and I face bad days just as you did, but I chose differently. I chose to, to react differently. You didn't. You chose to react the way you did. And that is... Uh, that's the lesson. That's the, you know, it's, it's supposed to be an inspiration to, to drive us against those Joker-like forces in our life that constantly question and challenge everything, you know, we stay or stand for or believe in. That's the that's the, the beauty of the Joker and, and his character. Uh, I also said that the movie would probably be an extremely well-made film because the previews look like that. And that's what it seems like. It seems like that's the case. Everybody who's uh, seeing it's like, it's a really, really amazing film. As if that's the only thing that matters. Do these characters mean so little to you? Does the their role in our society, are they so interchangeable and so replaceable to you? They're just nothing. They're just some, some color on the screen for you in a fleeting moment in the theater. So all you need is a good time and you're happy. Or all you need is a good piece of uh, you know art well done, just within its own right. You know, I was talking in my very last video about the Brandon Routh coming back as Superman Kingdom Come and how I believe Superman Returns, and I'll stand up for that movie 
in its own right as a film, not as a Superman movie, not as a Superman movie, it did horrible things that it should never have done as a Superman movie. But if you, you know, didn't name him Superman and named him some other character or whatever, it's actually a very decent, well done film. It's all coherent and cohesive and um, tightly wound together and themes well paced, well everything. But that doesn't matter. As great of a movie as I think that is in its own right, it's not the proper treatment of Superman. So I'll constantly stand against it. And, and that's the same thing with the Joker movie. This is the, the Joker movie. We've already seen it. It's already had a mark. Uh, Jim Lee's admitted, as I've said before, that this is going to start shaping the Joker from here on out. So everybody who wants to come and jump on the comments and say, Tony Donning already said it's not really a Joker movie. Don't be so naive. Don't be so freaking naive. It, they will say whatever they want to say. I, I don't believe that this movie started as a Joker movie. Not at all. I believe it started as, as something, some d Descent into Madness kind of film. And somebody said, hmm, that Joker name, that uh, that brings in the bucks. Why don't we slap that sticker on top of it? And there there we go. You know, so yeah, I believe that happened. Sure. But that's I'm not going to reward Warner Brothers for that dishonest marketing. No, this is ridiculous. This is uh, this is something that shouldn't be celebrated. It should not be supported. But, you know, people are lemmings. And, uh, you know, if, if enough people on Twitter say it's good and it's amazing, well, i got to go see it, too, or else I'll be left out. Can't have, I can't have an independent thought like that. i got to go see it. So, you know, <laughs> they're going to go see it. They're going to love it. Many of you have seen it already, and uh, that's great. Uh, but everything that I've seen about the movie and the synopsis that I read, so that's what I want to get to. Because a lot of people are going to say, if they haven't typed it out in the comments already, well, at the end, you're wrong, Professor, because at the end, he's sitting there in Arkham and he's and he and they insinuate that maybe he's wrong and maybe this isn't his origin. Maybe, you know, he doesn't. This is just how he's remembering it right now. If that's the case, I mean, I know it is because in the synopsis, then that means it's probably not a very well done story. Uh, you know, I, I won't fully judge that, you know, without seeing it. I'm not going to see it. So whatever. But um, that's a really cheap little gotcha at the end. And that worked in The Killing Joke. People might say, well, that's what happened in The Killing Joke, and you, you defended that before. Well, yeah, because The Killing Joke was not a story about the Joker's descent into madness. That was a part of it, and that was a good part of it. It was a, a well-done part of it. Killing Joke was about Batman striving desperately to see if he would ever be able to get through to the Joker. And in, in part of that journey, we've got, we've got Joker's, uh, an account anyway, of Joker's descent into madness, which which will further label him to the point of no he's never really going to be able to get through this is this weird moment at the end between the two of them laughing um people have speculated about what's going on and stuff like that but uh but no the two of them will always be bitter rivals that's the uh there's so much more to the killing joke than just the story of the joker he's not the main character we don't follow him and care for him and invest in him and all of that no you've got him doing horrible things to barbara gordon torturing jim gordon batman striving to uh to, to, to put this all together and get through to, uh, before the end the killing joke's got a lot going on in it that the joker movie doesn't the joker movie's just about just about the joker let's just uh let's just invest in him and oh yeah he's, yeah he did have a rough time didn't he that's um that's we really feel sorry for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it's not good that he did what he did, but you know, it's, you know, you can, you can sort of see why he did. No, 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 no. That's not what the Joker's for. And don't even tell me, well, I didn't feel like that when I saw the movie, because that's what it's leading you to feel like. And then big whoop that it wants to do this little gotcha at the end and say, well, that's, you know, how I remember it now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You've already led people through this. It's already going to shape the way people are, are portraying the Joker from here on out in the comics and whatnot. Not that that matters too terribly much because DC doesn't know what the heck it's doing right now. It's uh, that's a universe that's so not worth even remotely touching in any way. Um, so it's just, who cares? Who cares? Um, I was right about the Joker. I am happily, happily uh, saving that money and happily saving my money for anything that DC does in film or, or, or comics. They've just gone above and beyond themselves to to prove to us that they are in no way interested in providing us anything remotely like the content that they're known for the classic iconic heroes the classic iconic values the stories that resonate in the human psyche they've shown that that's not something that they're interested in doing so uh so yeah i don't care whatever they want to do they're they're doing it they're gonna um they've determined that they're going to burn down 
the DC universe with them on their way out, you know, with Dan Didio, with uh, Warner Brothers, whoever's in charge there, they're, um, they're going to burn it all down on their way out. They're not going to let go unless somebody else do better. So, uh, don't mean to be all doom and gloom, but that's just the way it is. So that, so what does that mean for those of us who love the characters dearly and who hold to them and really, uh, you know, uh, are inspired and aspire to who those characters should be? That just means we have to keep the classics. We have to keep the classics. We have to keep pissing off Dan DiDio and going and buying all of the old classics and not the new stuff. We have to keep um, keep the memories of the old characters and the iconic versions of these characters, keep them alive so that when these uh, these new versions, these new hip, you know, BS, hipster nonsense takes on these characters eventually just fizzle out because that's what they'll do. They're just fads. Then, uh, then, then we'll be able to say, no, here. Here's what, you know, here's what isn't gone yet. Here's what's uh, remained within the consciousness. So that's all I've got to say for this. Uh, rant and rave as you will in the comments, whatever. I was right about the Joker movie. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be back with more live streams, more, um, more all of the usual. But uh, do check out my own graphic novel ending uh, this, this Saturday. Yeah, the store's coming down this Saturday. So uh, limited time in on that. And then I've got the link to the next campaign that's coming soon as well, Sword and Sorcery book that's coming out. So uh, check that out. And until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching. By now, chances are you've probably heard of and hopefully ordered your copy of my graphic novel, Tales from the Stacks. But in case this is the first you're hearing of it, it is still in demand on Indiegogo, but it will not be available forever. The in-demand store is closing down later this month as we prepare for fulfillment and for the new campaign for the new book launching in the fall. Tales from the Stacks is a collection of three of my uncanny suspense stories in the vein of the Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt, and such. They are introduced by a mysterious librarian who's welcomed you into the inner stacks of the library where they keep such tales. And it features interior art by an amazing collection of talent. Illustrator monk Dave T., the great Kyung Lee, and another artist I haven't even announced yet. And of course, the variant covers are still available. Kyung Lee's famous cover, as well as John Malin's amazing work, colored by Kyle Ritter, and then the Dave T. Indiegogo exclusive as well. We have prints, t-shirts, bookmarks by Pablo Romero. So if you haven't checked out the campaign page, or if you haven't checked it out in a while, swing by and see if there's any new content you might have missed. Thanks for helping us reach so many of the stretch goals, and we'll see if we can't reach another one before it ends.